a final step if you want to you know really finish this off is like buff up the paint job with a cat <laughs> So you see my video thumbnail and the very start of this video, you'll know that the test model that I'm showing you here isn't exactly how we're going to paint this model, but I've kept that in just to sort of show the importance of doing a quick test model rather than painting up your whole squad or your whole army in like a production line and getting to the end and realizing, hang on, this isn't quite what I had in mind. So we're using some quite old brushes here and you can see me just sort of uh, rubbing it on my finger just now just to loosen up the bristles because we're going to use a stippling technique for most of the armor and the idea of that is to get a dirty worn uh you know don't want to say it but like a grim dark like a grim dark feel to the model so with that in mind you can use some really old knackered paint brushes or like i am here some paint brushes from uh you know real cheap paint set like a kid's paint set basically we want to do the stippling from above downwards because we're going to use it to partly create uh, like a weathered look, but also to provide uh, like a lighting effect. So we'll have, uh, you know, brighter volumes towards the top of the model and like darker underneath. We need to use a smaller brush to get into some of the areas on the model, though, like uh, around the chest and on the hands. And we're, we're always going from above, except on the first coat, which, which was XV88, where you, know, you kind of do need to hit it at sort of like 90 degrees, especially like around, around uh, you know, on the back of his legs, on his butt area. Kind of working on the basis that all the areas that you want to be lighter, make sure they've got more of a coverage of the XV88, but do it like a stippling approach, not a dry brush. You kind of want the, the ends of the brushes to poke onto the model to give a real sort of like random feel to where the paint is landing on the model, rather than a dry brush, which would kind of drag the brush over the model. The paint is out of the pot, put on the wet palette, thinned down very, very slightly, just really by the um, paint on being on the wet palette. So it's reasonably thick paint. And there's upsides and downsides to that. The upside is it uh, adds a tiny little bit of texture. Um, the downside is it adds a tiny little bit of texture. So depending on whether you want a super smooth paint job or not, you might want to thin down your paint a little bit. But if you are going to thin down your paint a little bit, you have to be more careful because when you're stippling with thinner paint, you can kind of accidentally end up almost like painting it on like a like a layering approach, which is, isn't what we're going for. So I've already worked up through the Zamiti Desert and now we're mixing in some Uriel Yellow into the Zamiti Desert. And it's the Uriel Yellow that gives a, a much yellower feel to the model. I'll just mention quickly here that you can follow my progress on different projects on my Instagram account, which is no procrastination minis. And at the time of recording this video, there's another chap on Instagram that's painting up Space Crusade. So check them out as well. Perfection is futile is their account name. I'll leave the details on the screen. So now we're going in with just Uriel Yellow and we're focusing on um, areas that would definitely catch the light. So top of the feet, we do the helmets, the shoulder pads, um, the hand. Kind of taking a kind of mixed approach of kind of like what's going to look good as well as trying to have a general idea of the light coming from above. Mixing a little bit of white in now for um, some of the highlights, which are going to be on the shoulder pads, the helmet. Again, we're using the stippling technique. A uh, little bit too much paint on the brush there, but it's totally fine. We're going to put a wash over the model, um, so we almost want to slightly over highlight it because the wash will tone it down. I found this model quite hard to decide where I wanted the highlight placements. It's partly because of those big shin pads that it's got. With the newer Marines where they have knee pads, it's a lot easier to provide a, like a highlight on top of the knee pad, which kind of makes the, the highlights down the leg look a lot better. I say look a lot better, it's, it's a lot easier to make it look 
like it should look, like to make it look natural and make it look right. Whereas the top of the um, the like lower leg pieces on this model uh, are in, in an area which would which which would mainly be in shade. We finished with the stippling on the armor. We'll be doing some more highlights after we put a wash on, but for now we're going to move over to doing a, a bit more of a normal paint job on the edges of the shoulder pads on the Aquila and a few other bits and pieces that basically need to be base layered before we highlight them. So I'm using Doomball Brown, which is a real nice sort of dark, you know, real nice base color for a red. If you're like me, you might struggle to kind of really fully appreciate what I'm what parts of the model are going to look like until you painted other parts of the model. What I mean by that is when I was highlighting the armor, I found that I needed to really move on to painting the red parts of the model so I could get a better idea of how the um, how the highlights that I was putting on the armor were going to be framed by the other colors on the rest of the model. So we're going to move up through Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and then mix in some Cadian Flesh Tone to highlight the red parts of the armor. On the Aquila, it's really just a case of highlighting it more red towards the edges and then go on with a little bit of the Cadian Flesh Tone mixed into the Evil Sun Scarlet as a, like a final highlight on the edges. On the shoulder pads, we're going to use a slightly different approach where we're going to provide a highlight towards the sort of center, especially right towards the top in line with where we put the highlight on the yellow armor. Kind of using a bit more of a stippling approach here and sort of going up with the Mephiston red, which obviously is a lot more red than the Doomball brown. Then some Evil Sun Scarlet and then mixing in a little bit of the Cadian Flesh Tone into the Evil Sun Scarlet. And we kind of just work in that onto the model using the stippling approach, like I said. We're going to mix up an oil wash now using Burnt Sienna. Now, in my test model that I showed you, the reason why it looks very different was because uh, I use a mixture of uh, brown, uh, like a dark umber, and a yellow oil paint to try and get something similar and it just didn't work at all. It had a, a green cast to it, which kind of makes sense mixing yellow with browns. Um, so the Burnt Umber is a lovely, warm, rich color and it's going to provide um, like oranges in the, in, the, in the shaded areas of the model, which is perfect for Imperial Fists. And we're just going to really reasonably carefully slap it over the whole model. There we go, when it's completely covered, um, it will dry very glossy. Uh, after me just cleaning the brush off there, you can just clean it with some uh, fresh uh, thinners. I'm using odorless thinners, uh, which I definitely recommend if you're going to be doing this indoors. And we're going to use a um, like a cotton bud uh, with some thinners added to it. And we're going to like, roll, roll it onto the model, or roll it off the model on the areas where we want to take off a lot of the wash. Now. I was painting this in one sitting and I gave it a good blast with a hairdryer. A little bit too much of a hairdryer if I'm honest. I would have, I really should have tried to take off a little bit of this before it was so dry. You can see that the, it looks like it's still wet, um, but it isn't. It's just dried very, very glossy. Oh, I say it's, I say it's dried, it's not fully dried, um, but it's pretty dry, uh, but it's still very glossy. I recommend trying to take off some of that um, excess before it dries quite so much and then just using a brush on some of the smaller areas to remove excess oil paint so because the oil wash tints the color of the whole model not just the recess areas 
So we leave it in the recesses, uh, but it also does tint the remainder of the areas. Even where you've wiped it off, it will still have tinted it. And I say tinted it, it will have toned it down. So that's why we're going back in with some of, um, some of the uh, light yellow paint, just to add in some of the highlights again. And we're using the same approach, just stippling it on in the areas where we think it looks good. Over, you know, on the areas where we've already highlighted it previously with that paint. I was starting to get quite annoyed with this model at this point, and I, I almost binned it off. And I think it was really just because the oil wash had left quite a glossy residue, and I was feeling like I seemed like I wasn't sure whether I really wanted to stop and matte varnish it. So I sort of carried on without doing that because I knew that I could matte varnish it at the end. But I'll be honest, it was just pissing me off. You'll see that in a minute where I uh, try and base coat the gun, and it just really wasn't. It just wasn't doing what I wanted it to, but you know, I'm, I, I like leaving these bits in the videos because myself personally, you know, I learn the most when I'm watching videos where people do things that I've either I've never done before or they do things wrong or they get unexpected results, uh, which they learn from. So that's what I'm doing here as well. So yeah, here I am trying to paint this very slightly thinned down mixture of uh, black and German grey onto the gun and it's sort of super glossy because it's going over the top of the oil wash and just sort of fixing up a little bit on the face there where I, uh, um, the base coating on the grill on the on the mouthpiece uh, went on the, on the armour. But yeah, like I was saying, I was getting really quite annoyed with the model at this point, so you, you'll see... Um, you'll see me do a little bit more work on it and then I, I, and then I almost give up, but... Now, as you've seen the final model, you know I didn't completely give up. So I did decide to matte varnish it at this point, and I wanted to do um, all of these Space Crusade models without using the airbrush, because I used the airbrush to do a Zenithal undercoat on all of my Kings of War set that I painted up the project before this one, and this Space Crusade set is going to be painted up without the airbrush, using the stippling approach primarily uh, to give a nice sort of beaten weathered look. So there we go, we can see that's a lot nicer on the gun there, the, the matte finish. And I'm going to rebase over the top with, um, with black to start with. Same on all these uh, parts of the armour, the, I don't know what you call them, these bits. If you, if you know this in the comments, if you're an expert on Space Marines, let me know. But that's kind of like his uh, like pyjama things <laughs> underneath his armour. I know it's not really pyjamas, I know it's, it's the joint in the armour, but I'm not sure what they're called. I spent quite a quick paint job, so I don't actually paint the um, like ammo pouches that he's got like around his waist. I'm just leaving those the colour that they are at the moment. So using some German grey to um, highlight the areas that we've undercoated in black, or that we've base coated in black. Although I've varnished with that thin down Vallejo matte varnish, there's still quite a bit of glossiness in some of the recesses. So that's quite a nice look to have at the end of the painting process. But um, on the backpack where the like the tubes are all going around, I'm finding it quite hard to paint the gray over the top. Like, it's getting, like, there's, a, there's a gloss that I don't want basically. But you know, having said that, overall the German grey is providing a, you know a, a reasonably good sort of highlight to that black. You see me using the side of the brush there, sort of cheating a little bit, and we're going to highlight the gun with the German grey as well. And as we highlight the gun further, we're just adding a little bit of white to the mix. I decided I wasn't going to use any metallic paint on these Imperial Fists, so so the gun is going to be painted just using greys. It's not really meant to be uh, like a real non-metallic metal uh, paint scheme. 
Um, I'm just kind of doing it quickly in a way that I think is going to look all right. Probably got a little bit too much paint on my brush there when I'm painting the blade. Could do with it. Uh, could do with those points that I was trying to paint on being a little bit thinner, but as it is the first sort of highlight through, you know, kind of like mid-layer highlight, um, it's totally fine. I decided I was just going to paint the front of the gun lighter than the back on that main facing part of the bolter, and put a highlight on the barrel, and then also um, some highlights on the clip, and and then just some edge highlights. So no real rhyme or reason to that. It's not, like I said, it's not meant to be uh, like a true to life non-metallic metal. You know, I suppose it's, I wanted it to read kind of like metal, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just using a thin down bit of German gray here to blend in between the black and the, uh, at the rear of the gun and the German gray at the front. And now I've mixed in a little bit of white paint and we're gonna do the same, but closer to the front of the gun i.e. where I'm wanting the highlight to be. So this is more of a, um, you know, this, this is more of a, a glazing approach rather than the stippling that we were doing earlier. Just moving the paint around on the model. And, you know, trying to leave it in a position that is going to dry and achieve the result that I want. So I base coat the eyes here with white just because I've got it on the palette and I want to start to see how the face is going to look. I'm using a thinned down bit of the uh, Doom Ball Brown that I had to provide a little bit more warmth to the shadows in the shoulder pads and around that, um, you know, that raised bit on the top of the helmet. Basing the eyes with Caliban Green and we're using Moot Green for the highlight and we're just going to sort of mix a gradient and work our way up to the lighter green and eventually put a little bit of yellow in for the final highlight. You can see I've accidentally painted a bit on his nose there, which we'll clean up a little bit later. So we're doing the classic sort of like uh, gemstone lenses here where you um, make the highlight, you know, you highlight towards the center of the eyes, like the bridge of the nose, and we'll put a little reflection dot on the very far rear corners at the top. And here's that reflection dot I was talking about. Just using a really fine brush here to try and like plonk a little little dot on of fairly thick paint so that it doesn't run everywhere. And while I've got the really fine brush out, I'm adding a bit of yellow to that moot green to um, push the highlights a little bit on the on the front of the lenses. And yeah, again, while we've got that little brush out, we'll just put a bit of the yellow highlight color on and uh, clean up that bit bit where I painted green on the nose. Decided the lenses need a little bit more of a highlight so we're adding a bit of white to the, the yellowy green mix. Using this very sparingly. So here's what we've got so far and I was saying that I got annoyed with the model earlier. I painted a bit off camera because I wasn't sure whether I was going to carry on with it and all I've done is put a little bit more Doom Ball Brown in the uh, recesses that I'm pointing out there and highlighted up the gun a little bit more. And I'm going to carry on doing a bit more of that now on camera. Like I, like I said, the model, I just wasn't feeling it until, until I got to a little bit further down the line and then I felt like it was going in the right direction. So yeah, we're just going to highlight the gun a little bit more and it really is a simple case of just adding a bit more white at each step. I think I needed to sort of sleep on this model. I was painting it, I was trying to paint it all in one session, you know, it was only going to take sort of like 
I don't know, about three hours in total for the whole paint job. Uh, mainly because I was sort of making it up as I went along. When I paint more of these, I'll be able to do them a bit quicker. Um, but the way the oil wash went on and how I um, I dried it and it was a little bit too dry and it wasn't coming off in quite the way I wanted and then it was super glossy and I couldn't really be bothered to put the matte coat on, then I did. And some of the highlighting on the pipes, uh, the the vents on the model didn't look very clean. I was just getting really annoyed with it. So so I just sort of like left it till the next day and came back and put in a much better frame of mind to carry on with the highlights and get a, get a good result, you know, at the end. So you can see kind of how I'm in a bit of a better mindset really at this point because um, I'm spending more time highlighting uh, more carefully. So on the backpack, that's quite apparent rather than using the side of the brush just to highlight down the center. I'm trying to pick out each of the um, each of the highlights on the piping individually. In the same way that earlier we had to re-highlight up the yellow of the armor, I'm going to do the same on the red sections here, using exactly the same paints as we did before. On the shoulder pads, I thought I'd try something a bit different, so highlighted it up with the mixture that includes some Cadian Flesh Tone and Wild Rider Red. Um, you know, you know, very roughly, you can see I've just sort of popped those uh, highlights on there. Then we'll go back in with the Wild Rider Red, which is like a really bright orangey red, and sort of glaze it in towards those like higher pinky highlights to take the pink back towards the sort of like orangey red color. I thought that I, di I didn't want to paint any actual metallic paint on this model. For some reason I just didn't fancy doing it, but I wanted the blade to look different to the bolter. So I thought I'd just put some uh, skin wash, a very thin down glaze on the blade. It's kind of like a mixture really of it, make, trying to make it look a little bit worn and rusty and just make it look a bit interesting and different to the gun. No other rhyme or reason as to why I chose this kind of like, um, like ruddy skin color. Another little mistake that, um, another thing that went a little bit wrong really, um, uh, putting these transfers on using the decal fix. I don't know if I'm just useless at using the decal fix, or it might be that these um, old, you know, really old Space Marine decals are uh, um, a little bit past it. I, I don't know. If you're really, you know, really good at using decals, you know, let me know in the comments what I might have done wrong. But you can see that basically it's ripped as I as I put it on, which is actually totally fine um, for this model because I want it to look worn. But if I was trying to apply this to look uh, to a model to look sort of like crisp and clean, it would have just been a complete. Uh, a complete write-off basically. So just using some of the uh, XVATA and uh, Zamizi Desert mix to add some extra kind of like chip in and worn areas onto the decal to help it blend in with the rest of the model. Or adding in a bit of German grey to that mix to um, provide some uh, like chip in and cut through the decal and in particular we'll kind of like make use of that tear in the decal to be a uh, big scratch down the armour panel. Using a brush with a good tip, we're going to use some of the, um, we've got a mixture of XVATA and German Grey to provide some, uh, like, a, like a darker version of the of the underlying, you know, the very base colour to add some scratches to the model. I'm kind of glad I did this because I wanted it to, I wanted it to look weathered and beaten and chipped up, which the stippling approach starts. Um, and then we're finishing off now with some like intentional extra weathering, but I, I think I went a little bit too heavy. In, I want to say heavier. I don't mean the amount of scratches, but I think they were all. I I could. I was trying to paint them on camera, and I think I could have done them a little bit finer, basically. And then we're using the, um, the Uriel Yellow and White mix to put a little line underneath the scratches to provide the like reflection that you'd get on on a scratch in like normal circumstances, you know, like a scratch in in the, in the armor. And while we got it on our brush, we'll uh, use it to just add some you know final highlights to the armor as well.
but yeah here's what it looks like with those scratches added like i said i'm uh 50 50 really on on how it looks i think they look pretty good whether that's just me being critical of my own work or not i'm, I'm not quite sure but i think they're just not fine enough and maybe a bit too uniform but you know it is what it is i can i can you know do it slightly differently on the on the next model in the squad but yeah you know let me know what you think i, I think there's you know i think it looks you know i think it's i think it's pretty good but i you know i always think it looks pretty good if, if i get to the end of the model it's because i think it looks pretty good um you probably won't see any that i don't think look all right because I would have you know binned them off halfway through and that's that's why i hardly any you know that's why i don't always finish projects and i'm really focusing on trying to make sure i finish stuff um you know even if maybe i'm not 100 percent happy with it just painting the base with a bit of um silver paint you can use any silver paint i'm using vallejo metal color which is amazing and i um, gonna use uh german gray on the rims of the base there's a little bit left to do here so stay tuned to the end because we've got a couple more steps I decided to add a little bit of chip into the gun. Um, I realized that it looked a bit off that this guy was so beaten up with the chip in. So just using the black um, to provide a little bit of depth to the chips. And then we'll use some pure white paint to highlight these uh, these chips. Unfortunately, the camera was um, not very well focused, so I didn't catch painting those chips. And you know, here we go. We've gone from this um, you know undercoated marine to fully painted. Like I said, I think it looks pretty good, but you know, let me know what you think in the comments. And a final step, if you want to you know, really finish this off, is like buff up the paint job with a cat. Yeah. Like and subscribe if you liked it and you want to see more. And we'll just have a quick look now at some photos of the model on the, on the game board, just to get a feel of where we're going with the project and give me some motivation to really plow through and move on to the next squad of Marines and basically paint up the whole set. So thanks for watching.